there! Welcome back to Corpse Factory! Where we sh saved our buddy Shinya! God damn. <laughs> Just that one guy that we had to save. <laughs> uh, well, now we're sick putting screens and shit on the skin. I'm not gonna equip it. Oh, I'm moisturizing. Health. I'm just gonna go back to the start. <laughs> I feel. I'm feeling pretty relaxed by, by the time I finish. Perhaps I'll spend the rest of the evening reading a book in bed. Or I could try and plan out my next move with Kojiro. Should I come forward and clean my and claim my identity and request access to his morgue? It's a big step. This seems to be the time for me to make a bold move. I can't keep working on requests that are doomed to fail. Well, uh, that's downside. Just look at my channel. <laughs> I need to start seducing, uh, seceding for me, for Corpse Girl. I I pull my laptop to me once more and begin a brainstorm and begin to brainstorm my plans to take over the world. <laughs> Let's get the fuck off the screen. I don't need you in front of me. I'm guessing you're just lonely because you haven't been on the screen in a while. <laughs> you should be here by now. I was pretty clear at, uh, about meeting at 5.30 p.m. It's already 5.45 p.m. and he isn't even in sight. I thought for sure that he wouldn't miss a chance to meet up with me again. I couldn't contain my nerves. I try to tell myself that I'm already angry because of <laughs> trepidation, and I'm not actually angry at him. This is a big moment for me. I never once received my revealed my identity to anyone. What do you mean? <laughs> Only Retro knows who I am. And Storm. A couple other people I've had on this channel. Yeah. Only a couple of people. Yeah. yeah that actually kind of says a lot. I assume he will take it in stride. I wouldn't be going through, uh, going through with this if I didn't firmly believe that. Hi. He shows up. He's a doctor. <laughs> yes, I know he's in the morgue. My neck jerks in reaction to his voice. There you are. I'm late. <laughs> I made a point of checking the time on my phone and nod. Sauce. Uh, traffic? You drove here? No. Okay. What did you want to discuss? I have a request for you. And a confession. Okay. Kujiro's eyes widen, and he looks me up and down. Knew it. I blink and look down at the ground. He knows for some. He's known for some time. I was fooling myself, thinking that he. Thinking that my stupid attempt turn suspect of my identity we're working on him you're going to confess your love been waiting for this moment <laughs> okay okay let's go with that i wasn't expecting that to be a goddess one of the last things i'd expect not the first thing I'd expect, but certainly not the last. Wait, N no, that's not. Sh 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 no more words. I accept your heart. <laughs> Please.
tell me he's just trolling. He's just trolling for fun. He has to be. Kojiro, I don't... Call me Koji now. We're one. No need to be shy. <laughs> Please tell me he's just trolling just for the shits and giggles, man. He has to be. <laughs> this isn't going getting me anywhere. <laughs> Thanks to my frustration and nervousness, I simply blurred out my true confession. I'm Corpse Girl. Uh, Kotaro doesn't react. Well, he cocks his head a few degrees to the side, slowly and surely, if you can even call that a reaction, to my son Nabder. Yes? Okay. So, a kiss to commemorate our love? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh okay. He knows, he knew from the beginning, isn't it? Did you even hear what I just said? Of course. I'm Corpse Girl! I'm the one behind the corpse photos, and the deaths, and... <laughs> he knew it from the start. It feels kind of strange to say this, these things out loud for some reason. It leaves a sour and bitter taste in my mouth that I can't swallow. Yes, I know. I knew it since our first noise chat. Uh, our first noise chat? Remember? You messaged me late at night. Asked me if I knew about Corpse Girl. Huh. Is that what tipped you off? You assumed I was her just because I mentioned her? No. Then... How? How did you figure it out? You asked me to look up names. Names of Corpse Girl's victims. Lover. It's actually pretty good. Oh yeah, I did, huh? That was stupid of me. I suppose that gave it away. No, other people could have known those names. Huh. Then, come on, throw me a bone here. How'd you find out? The I'm guessing it was the way she asked that tipped him off. <laughs> it would make sense. You said you requested A. Chihanada's death. Huh. It's she's Honda. The guy who died in traffic. In the traffic accident. I remember that I lied to Kodro about being the one to request his death. It was the only way I could escape his suspicion at the time. If I remember correctly, it threw him off my trail for a while. He believed I was the one who requested his, the death, so that explained how I was the one of Corpse Girl's victim. But if what Kodro is telling me, uh, telling me now, is that it's true, then my lie actually had the opposite effect. How did it make him figure out my identity? I don't understand. I confessed to requesting Eiji Hanada's death. So what? That was a lie. Yeah. Even so, I still don't understand. You're not making any sense. Kojiro's shoulders drop. He stares at me intently. You lied about requesting Eiji Hanada's death. That lie proved to me that you're a corpse girl. Huh. So, suspicion then. Yes, but how? Tell me! I was the one who requested A. Jihanada's death. Ah. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Kojiro's deadpan contentment makes his, makes his claim believable. Beyond all doubt, I feel blood drain from my face. I submitted his photo to Corpse Girl's website. Imagine my surprise when you claim that you did it. Huh. That lie made it clear. You knew his name. You knew he died. You knew he was Corpse Girl's victim. 
Huh. <laughs> There's a lot. Now go. You are corpse go. Despite my dazed state, I can't fault his logic. I took credit for something Kojiro did. Of course, that would paint me as a liar. In his eyes. So, Kibno must repent. Yes. And yet, you've still met up with him. And not just today, but at the cafe, too. Well yes. played. Aren't you scared of me? <laughs> no, that's not the way I put it. Oops. You should be scared of me. After all, I requested the death, had motive for murder, even if I didn't carry it out personally. Imagine what else I'm capable of. Huh. I insist. I subconsciously take a step back from Kodro. Suddenly looming forward. From our discussions, I know you don't kill your victims. You just nudge them, urge them, tempt them with death as an escape from their fear. Yeah. You're no murderer. What reason have I to fear you? Fair enough. A killer no has no reason to fear the one who doesn't kill, fair enough. He's right. He's absolutely right. He knows everything about Corpse Girl's methods. My methods. Kojiro is a dangerous enemy. Or a powerful ally. And it's up to me to decide whether he's with me or against me. I recall our conversation at the cafe. He claimed he wouldn't support Pearl Girl if she came to him for assistance. He's a fan. He would support her ob obediently. No questions asked, as long as the price was right. So, all I have to do is make him an offer that he can't refuse. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to see where this goes. Help me. Help Corpse Girl. Rid this fucking world of the fetid filth that infests it. I decide to quote a certain passage from a, bo a book that Kojiro himself gave me. A paragraph from Strange Flower that has stuck with me for some time. Ooh. There's a certain beauty in death, a macabre certainty. Absolute state of finality. Nobel Sinclair. Aha, <laughs> he knows. You understand what I'm talking about. You work with cadavers for a living. The dead can't hurt you. They can't betray you. They can't disobey or object or disapprove. Oh, a little hard to say the dead. Wouldn't it be better if we were all beautiful like that? Didn't expect Corpse Girl to be so vain. Yet. Is your motivation simply to impart your own ideas of beauty to the world? Possibly. No. There's more to it. Of course. I, me, myself, Noriko, may be vain. But Corpse Girl isn't burdened by such petty notions. Her ambition is pure. Okay. Her ambition is crucial to the survival of the entire human race. <laughs> Thought I had a big ego. You're so self-important. Both you and Corpse Girl. <laughs> I don't expect you to understand. Not yet. But I've realized that I can't do everything alone. I need your help. I 
need cadavers. I see. What's in it for me? Uh, that's a good question. This is the critical point of our negotiation. It could all fall apart here if I don't offer something that Kodro considers worth the risk. The question is, what does he want? What does he desire? I propose an equal partnership. You'll reap half of the benefits from Corpsegill's work. Okay, this offer is a gamble. I know that in the back of my mind, however, it was the only feasible solution I could come up with when I planned out this encounter late last night. This tactic reels completely, relies completely on my uh, assumed understanding of Kojo's in, innermost desire. If I'm wrong about him, then this whole thing will blow up in my face. Corpse girl will create more debt than you could ever imagine. Think of all the fresh corpses you could get your eager little hands on. Kojiro shakes his head. His lips first and then and then thin line. Oh, disapproval. Sorry. Already got my fill of corpses. Morgue's full enough as it is. I narrow my eyes and stand my ground. I can't back down now. I'm so close to unraveling him and his secrets. Hmm. You've always wanted to mimic Nobel Sinclair. I can see it in your face, in your very soul, whenever you praise his work. You want to emulate his actions and experience his escapades firsthand. You want to dress up corpses, take them out to dinner, perform all manner of bizarre social experiments with the dead. Right, debatable. It's your passion, but living vicariously through Nobel Sinclair's books isn't enough for you anymore. And that's where your fascination with me, with Corpse Girl, stems from. As soon as you figured me out, you knew I was your gateway to satisfying your lust for the macabre. You work with cadavers all day, every day. So you can't get them out of the morgue with eyes on you at all times. But I can. I have the perfect plan on how to withdraw all the corpses we could ever need. Half of them for you, and half of them for me. Okay. An equal partnership. I end uh, my speech and let Kodro bask in my words. And from here, I think it's the best time to kind of end the episode after that whole speech. So, I hope you guys have a great, well, time and a great day too. While we question what Kodro is about to do. So, I'll see you guys next time.